All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and uh, welcome to the uh, latest in our series of webinars with uh, building your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, my name is David Pothier. I'm here on the Auto, uh, AutoCAD product support team. And uh, today we'll be talking about uh, productivity tips and tricks part to deuce. And uh, we have a, a little bit different uh, organization today. Um, Victoria Studley will be doing uh, a lot of the presentation uh, this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are, uh, along with Volker helping out a little bit. And then uh, myself and uh, Stephen Bissett will be uh, in the background along with Nelman, Nelman uh, answering some questions. So uh, feel free to you know, ask questions during the presentation through the online um, interface and we'll uh, try to answer things as they come through. So before we get started and turning it over to uh, Victoria, I just want to run a couple quick polls like we usually do. And uh, I'll go ahead and launch this. And uh, I just want to know if this is the first time you've been to one of these webinars or if we're getting new people showing up. And it uh, looks like uh, we get a, a fair number of new people, but uh, still a lot of people have been here before. So we'll go ahead and let that go for a few seconds more. So it looks like about 72% uh, have been here before. All right, we'll go ahead and close that one. And I want to just find out uh, which products you guys are using as uh, as a, your main product. Uh, LT, AutoCAD, one of the verticals, um, or something else. And uh, so far, it looks like the majority are using AutoCAD and LT. A bunch of uh, Civil 3D and Map users as well. Okay. All right, and I'll go ahead and close that poll. So that's great. Thank you. And with that, I'll uh, go ahead and turn this over to Victoria. Oh. Or actually, to, to Volker, actually. Right. Yeah, actually, I was going to steal the show for a bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Victoria. You're too good to me. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And um, uh, we'll hope this... Uh, we're going to hope this is going to be another uh, valuable presentation for you. Uh, again, Victoria is going to be presenting most of it today with her favorite tips and tricks that we left out of our first productivity tips and tricks session. Um, we also, of course, have Nam in here with the expert elites. I've uh, actually posted a link on this main slide as why I've left it up for a moment. If you want to find out more about who the expert elites are, uh, they are end users such as yourself, and they are a valuable resource in both the, uh, uh, the Autodesk community as well as uh, some of them maintain their own blogs, uh, and they're always willing to jump in and help answer questions in our discussion forum. So uh, check out that link to find out a little bit more about the expert elites. So having said that, let's go ahead and take care of some housekeeping. As Dave said, you know, feel free to leave questions in the chat window. We're going to follow up a little later and after the uh, demo to answer additional questions. But in the meantime, those will be handled in the chat window. The session will be recorded and uh, will be made available. For those who attended last week, we had some problems with the audio. It will get uploaded, but in the meantime, uh, you can find that presentation where we have the uh, data set um, available for you uh, to download on the um, Box account, AutoCAD IQ. And that link, of course, is going to be made away, uh, available to you in a follow-up email. All right, about this series here, well, we have a landing page. Many of you have been there. Uh, do check it out. and. You can also leave questions after the presentation is over. Something pops into your head 3 o'clock this morning, go ahead and uh, go to this feedback page and ask a question there. We'll try and get, get, get you a good answer. Um, you can also leave feedback on this current webinar. Leave feedback for future webinars. Uh, we love your ideas and suggestions, and we've put many of those in place. You can also send feedback directly to this link. This link works a lot better than using, say, my name or Victoria's name and an email because uh, 
we do have other duties and this way everybody on the webinar team can try and get to the answer for you. Use Build Your AutoCAD IQ in the subject line. We have numerous webinar uh, series by different teams and um, uh, you want to make sure to get it to the right team, obviously. So here's some of the previous webinars we had uh, and have made available on our YouTube channel. So check those out. One of them, of course, is the uh, productivity tips and tricks uh, that we had on January 29th. Uh, by the way, that data set from that webinar will be available for download within this data set that we'll make available after the presentation. So um, many of you know AutoCAD 2016 was released this week. And because of that, for our Autodesk Knowledge Network featured articles, I wanted to point out that under the, um, uh, on this website for installation and licensing, there are many useful links to help you get started um, with installing and upgrading and managing any licensing. Uh, and, and note, act, some of the licensing and activation and registration has changed a little bit. So uh, if you need additional information on that, check out these links. And they will be available in this PowerPoint when you download it. Also, we do have links to the hot fixes and service packs, as well as additional downloads um, on this Autodesk Knowledge Network site. So check it out for all kinds of useful information. So, getting to today's webinar, we are going to show you some tips and tricks. Many of these aren't really tricks, really. Uh, they're just old school ways of doing things uh, and nothing real out of the ordinary. Perhaps a little bit of using the command line to get something done. We'll have new school stuff uh, showing some of the hidden features of certain commands you may not be aware of, or maybe at one time you were, but you forgot about them. We do that often. Uh, those options, watching the command line, you may not see those uh, be available. Uh, and then there are system variables that affect how we work. So um, we tend to get into a rut when we do stuff in AutoCAD. I know I did. I, you know, we do things the same way. We do the same type of projects or, or maybe they're different, but we have our favorite commands or Lisp routines or, or maybe macros to get things done. Some of these functions are built into AutoCAD and we just aren't aware of it. So we're going to try and show some of those and hopefully teach you or show you something new. Hey, okay. Booker, while I get a second here, uh, there's a couple people that are saying that they don't hear any sound. Um, well, I guess telling them this doesn't help any, but <laughs> I was going to say, just, uh, trying to reclose the present, I'll close the presentation and restart, but I'll just uh, send them another instant message. Yeah, that's about it. Um, we really don't have any control on the other end about volume. If um, most of the people can hear me, then uh, everything's working well on our end, so I'm don't know what to tell you. I, it, it's a drag. Um, I hope they get that resolved um, as far as the sound goes. So uh, anyway, getting back to this, I am going to go ahead and turn this over to Victoria now. And let's see what she has to show us. Okay, can you see my screen? We can. I can and hear you as well. Excellent. All right, so let's get started here. Um, a lot of you will be familiar with this file here that Volker has provided in the past for other demonstrations. Um, the first thing we're going to do, uh, I did get lost here zooming out, and uh, we want to get back to that view that we were just in uh, when I opened the file. So at the command line, if you type in dash V, it'll bring up the view command, and in this uh, list of options here, you have an option to restore a view. And if you type in R, enter, it'll prompt you at the command line 
to type in a view name. So we'll type in v1, enter, and it'll send us back over to that view that was previously saved in the drawing. Now, if you want to know where that's stored, uh, you can see your list of views by typing in view. And coming into this view manager, uh, there's a list of model views, and this one happens to be called view1, or v1. This is uh, how I knew how to get back there. So, from here, uh, the next trick we're going to cover is uh, how to override a block in assertion. So we've got this phone block over here uh, on Arnold's desk, and we want to copy it over to uh, Robert's desk here. So uh, if we uh, first right-click on here and uh, go to Selected, uh, this gives us a copy of this block. Um, so we want to put it on Robert's desk, but as you can see, the insertion point for the block is um, in the wrong corner here. Uh, so this next trick, we're going to right-click. I'm oh, sorry, we're not going to right-click. <laughs> um, oh no. <laughs> All right, uh, we're actually going to type B for base point. And this leaves the block in place and allows us to select another base point. And I'm going to select this upper left-hand corner. And if you notice, that allows us to snap to that left-hand corner instead of the little right. And I'm just going to place that right there on Robert's desk. And if you wanted to, you could change the scale of this. Um, we're just going to enter the default, which is a scale factor of 1, uh, which is the same size as the one that we copied. And the same thing for your Y scale factor. And we're going to leave the rotation angle as 0 and place the block. So at this point, uh, I want to check that my uh, O snaps are set correctly. So in order to do this quickly, um, we're going to type in OS mode. And this brings up this command here. And if we want to see how it's stored, uh, we're going to press F1 to bring up the help menu. And the help menu will bring up the OS mode system variable. And it tells us that this is stored in the registry and that it's stored as a bit code. And a bit code is a uh, system variable that stores your settings um, by adding together these numbers. So we want an uh, endpoint, midpoint, center, and node. And if you add these together, 1, 2, 4, and 8, you get 15. So we're going to close out the help menu. And we're going to go back into OS mode. And we're going to, it is already set to 15. We're going to set that to 15. So from here, we're going to switch over to this Canvas file and talk about fillet. So you can actually use the fillet command, which is uh, the shortcut for this is F. And we'll enter into the fillet command. And the default radius for fillet, if you look down at the command line here, is uh, 0. Um, so all you have to do to uh, fillet these two together, you see how this um, they're overlapping, and then you have these extra ends here, and we want it to make a nice clean corner. Uh, you select the ends you want to keep, and we'll get a command preview here that will show you what it looks like. Um, so we'll select the second line, and there's your fillet. You can also do this, um, you can use fillet to extend as well. So we've got these two lines that are not meeting at the ends there, but we want to connect them in a 90 degree angle. You can select the ends you want to extend, and they connect. So the next thing we're going to talk about is um, creating a polyline out of a regular line. So if we click on this line here, and we go over to Properties, and we can see that this is just a regular line, and this one is as well. Uh, but let's say we want these to be uh, one continuous polyline. Um, now you could go in and uh, use the PEDIT command, which stands for poly edit, uh, polyline edit, and it'll bring us into this um, this menu here. Oh, you know what? I sorry, <laughs> sorry, I forgot to change this back. <laughs> I'm going to explode this line back to a polyline. Sorry, or sorry, the polyline back to a, a line. All right, so we've got this line, and uh, we're going to use the Pettit command. 
and it gives us this prompt. This is what I was looking for. Sorry, Volker, there's my first awkward moment. <laughs> hey, nice to see I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh, definitely not. I'm sure there'll be many more. <laughs> okay, so every time you, um, uh, you click on an object that is not a polyline, it's going to prompt you to uh, convert it into a polyline. And this can get tedious after a while if you're converting multiple objects. Um, so there's a way to disable this. And, you know, I, I might have spoiled it a little bit by typing it in already, but it's uh, if you type in pedit accept, uh, this command, uh, this system variable, uh, can be changed to one. And it turns off that message. So if we type in pedit and then pick on that line, it will automatically convert this into a polyline. And then we'll just exit out of this, and I'll come over here and verify that it is now a polyline. There we go, right here. So if we click on this one, we know that this is a line. And we can go back to our fillet command now. And if we select our polyline first, and then we select our line, what this will do is create one continuous polyline out of the two of these objects. Okay, let's move on over here. This one's cool. Um, so we've got this uh, single line here, and let's say we want to array this up in a pattern that is, uh, you know, where, where all the lines are evenly spaced. Um, what we can do is click on this middle grip, and if you hold down the control key at the same time, you can move this up, and we're going to click once we've got it spaced the way that we want it to. And as long as you're holding down that control key, uh, this line will be placed at that interval. And let's say we miss a couple of them. Uh, we can actually go in and fill these back in. Here you have a evenly spaced array of lines. So going back to that uh, fill it command again, uh, we can actually add end caps, you can fill it these uh, parallel lines together to make these uh, end caps. And what it will do, if you select the first line to fill it and the second line to fill it, you see that uh, arc right here is actually a diameter equal to the space of the lines. So you can actually go all the way up and you can create a, an array of circuits here if you wanted to just like that. Okay, moving on to this next bit. Um, all right, for the next portion, we're going to want to um, change our O snap. Uh, you want to make sure that your O snaps are on. Okay, uh, you can either go through the options menu right there like I did, or um, if you press F11, this will toggle your I'm sorry, F3. <laughs> F3 toggles your O snaps on and off. So we want to make sure that they're on. And if you click F11, this will toggle your O track on and off. And we want to make sure that they're both on for this next uh, tip. So let's say we want to add a circle to the middle of this uh, rectangular shape here. Uh, we can come into the circle command. And from here, um, we've got our uh, center O snap on, so or our, our midpoint. So if we snap to that midpoint and then drag down, it's going to give us our O track uh, line here. And if we grab the second one here, just hover over that second midpoint and drag out where these two meet, the two lines will light up and we can click to place that center point. Now let's give it a radius of one. And now we've got our circle. So if you wanted, uh, if you noticed, the um, O track didn't go all the way across the uh, the page. Sometimes it, um, sometimes your O your O track uh, vector ex uh, extends across the entire screen. 
Um, so we can change this here in options by uh, going into options and then the drafting tab and toggling this on or off. And that's so I'll toggle it on. Oh, go ahead, Boker. Yeah, I was <laughs> no, going to say. I forgot to turn it on. No, I that's, to turn it that's okay, Victoria. Um, so that's actually the default for um, the, the tracking vector. And the reason you may want to t turn it off is because uh, if, if you get these vectors, as, as she'll, uh, Victoria will show you right now, when they go across the screen and you're referencing a lot of these points, uh, they can actually cause a little confusion. So you may find it easier to to just have those begin where the reference itself starts and go off the screen. Um, but it's all user preference, I think, is the big thing. So um, sorry about that, Victoria. Just wanted oh, no, to mention I'm, I'm that. I'm glad you jumped in to say <laughs> something. That was the, uh, the point I was trying to make and fumbling through it a little bit. <laughs> I appreciate the explanation. <laughs> you bet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. Uh, again, that was by going into options, uh, and then the drafting tab, and then unchecking display full screen tracking vector. And I'll say OK. So from here, uh, what we want to do with this circle is um, to add a couple of uh, center lines. And we're going to use that O-track uh, tracking vector in order do that. So first we want to change uh, layers to this center line layer. And we're going to invoke our line command, L. And we're going to hover over the center of this circle, but we're not going to click. Instead, we're going to drag up until we see that tracking vector. And then at the command line, enter 1.25 and then click enter. And if you see, now that line has started 1.25 units above the center point of this circle. And now we can use that tracking vector to drag this line back down. And we'll type in 2.5 at the command line and hit enter. And that gives us the rest of our line. Okay, so now from here, uh, we're going to select this, and let's say we want the center line uh, that goes across horizontal, uh, yeah, horizontally as well. Um, what we can do here is click on the center grip, and then we're going to, and you see that it's highlighted by, uh, it turns red there. Um, now what we can do is right click and select rotate, and then we'll right click one more time and say copy. And then you want to drag straight down to get that 90 degree angle. And then click anywhere. And then escape out of the command. And voila. We've got our center lines there. That's okay. just very cool functionality. I think the O-Track and O-Snap combination, you can do so much without drawing construction lines. Um, or doing repetitive tasks. So, very cool. Yeah, yeah it definitely saves you a lot of clicks. Um, and when uh, when you're drafting on a, a time uh, timeline, you can uh, definitely appreciate the number of clicks you've been saved here. All right, let's move on to the next tip here. Um, this uh, asterisk here, uh, we're going to show, we're going to demonstrate how to uh, create a hatch on the fly. Now this is, um, say you don't want to create your own user custom hatch uh, and you're not happy with the hatches that are available within the program by default, um, but maybe you only want to use it once and you don't necessarily need to save it, um, but you'd like something custom. So we're going to take this uh, here and we're going to use the array command, which is right here on your ribbon, or you can type in array at the command line. And we're just going to use the default number of columns and rows. And, uh, but they're not spaced the way that we want them. We want them to uh, come pretty close to touching. So what we're going to do, uh, now these units are approximately two units wide and, and tall. So we're going to type in, in this uh, columns between, we're going to type in two. And then the same thing for rows, we're going to type in two. And this looks about like what we want to see. And so now we're going to close the array. So from here, um, if 
let's say you had a particular shape you wanted to um, uh, to fill with this hash pattern, what you could do is type in PL for polyline. We're just going to trace a shape in here. I'm just going to use a random shape. I don't have one, but uh, if you had a, a file with one already drawn in that, uh, you could use just about any polyline, uh, as long as it's closed here. Um, we're going to use the clip command. So at the command line, you just type in clip. And the first thing to select is the array. So we'll select this array. This is what you want to clip. And then you're prompted with the options here. Um, so the first option we're going to pick is new boundary. And the second option here, we're going to pick uh, select polyline. And since we've drawn our polyline, we select it here. And the hatch is now clipped within the, the boundary of this polyline. Okay. So that's that's really handy for those one-time hatches, or uh, you know, you just need to represent something different. Uh, very cool command. Thanks for showing that one. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to um, oh polylines. Okay. Okay. Speaking of polylines, uh, we're going to type in PL and draw a couple of them here, and we'll keep this uh, we'll keep it on the center line layer because we're going to talk about. Uh, polyline, or not polyline, uh, we're going to talk about uh, line types. So let's just draw this here and we'll sort of make a, a weird shape. Enter. And we're going to copy this down. CO at the command line for the copy command. Pick your base point and drag down. And now we've got two identical polylines here. Uh, now if you zoom in the corner here, you notice that the, uh, the line type is not uh, evenly spaced, so it, it kind of starts over at each intersection every time the line changes direction. So, in order to uh, get this to, to get this to display a little more uniformly, um, you can set. And I'm going to pop over to the properties panel here, so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, you can set line type generation, and right now it's disabled. And you can set this by object by uh, just picking your object and then enabling it. And let's take a look at the difference there. Now you can see that this is, uh, regardless of where your uh, turns in the polyline are, um, that line type displays uniformly across that object. So if you wanted to do this globally, so you want everything in your drawing to um, to have enabled line type generation, there's actually a system variable for this. It's called PLINE GEN, and I'm just going to F1 again to grab that help. Uh, so here, if you wanted to read about it, this is the uh, these are the settings. Zero generates line types that start and end with dashed at each vertex of the polyline, and number one generates the line types uninterrupted, as we just saw with that uh, other polyline there. So let's close this, and that's PLINE GEN. Enter, and we're going to change this to 1. Hmm. Ah, Volker, I told you I was having trouble with this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, if we were to draw, yeah, if, if we were to draw a new P line right now, it would show um, the updated setting. I am not sure offhand, it's been a while since I've had to work with the P-Line gen system variable, um, if it's uh, if it's working as expected with the uh, generate, uh, not generate, regenerating the existing P-Line. Uh, it's definitely something I have to look into, but um, once you set the system variable, any new P-Lines are definitely modified um, with the uh, uh, P-Line uh, gen settings. So uh, you may have to modify the existing P-Lines there uh, to display as expected. Uh, I, like I said, I have to check into it, but uh, you're doing everything right there, so. <laughs> okay. I'm really sad about that one. I was really hoping that it would work the second time through. <laughs> okay, uh, so, all right, I'm really not happy with that, so what I'm going to do is just erase everything here. 
And we're going to talk oh. about the next tip with a blank canvas. It's pretty destructive. <laughs> I know. You know, I'm just I'm very upset with the, <laughs> yeah. the results here. So, yeah. so we're just going to start over. All right. We're, we're going to go back to lines. Let's just deal with some basic lines here. All right. So I'm going to draw a line. And uh, I'm going to click here. And I'm just going to draw. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change my uh, layer back to this object layer. And uh, now I'm going to draw my line. L command at the command line. And we're going to just draw a line here and click Enter. And, you know, I didn't mean to click Enter. So I'd like to pick up where I left off with this line. I'm going to go back into this line command. And I could pick the endpoint here, but if I didn't want to do that, uh, there's this handy uh, built-in feature called Continue. And if you just click Enter a second time, your line will pick up right where you left off and continue your line work. So let's click again, and I'm going to get out of that command. Uh, this also works for arcs. So I'm going to enter A at the command line for arc. And I could pick that again, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to click Enter, and it picks up right where I left off with the last uh, line there. Now I'm just going to enter this. And uh, this is my favorite part. If we click L for a line, and we're going to continue this arc. If you continue the arc with a line, it's going to continue in the same direction that the arc last, last left off in. So you can set the uh, distance here, uh, but it will continue in the same direction. All right. OK, I regret deleting all of those objects. Um, Volker, is there? Is there something I can do to get all of these things back? But I, I don't want to lose my. Um, yeah, un here. undo would really mess you up there. Oops, huh? What a drag. Oh. Oops. 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 Is can I? I mean, does that work? If I it just... it does, and it, oh. voila. All right. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's great. All right. So. so the, the, command. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the oops command? Yeah, so um, uh, the oops command, it's, um, it's documented in the help file for those who have never seen or used this. It uh, does not have a command uh, on the ribbon or on a toolbar. Uh, you have to type it in. That being said, you could create a ribbon button or a toolbar button or a palette button uh, and place it on there. But um, what it does, it will bring back the last selection of objects which you erased. If you uh, erased one object, it will bring that back. If you erased several, it will bring those back. But it only works one time, unlike the undo command. However, it is better than the undo command in some sense because you aren't undoing any work you might have already done. And for any of us, who have worked with AutoCAD, I mean, just having drawn a few pieces of line work, uh, that is just a major hassle to try to uh, undo those steps or to undo those steps and just to retrieve, you know, some work we'd done previously. So, oops. It's very cool. Oops. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Volker. Oh, I'm so happy that's there. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to switch back to this other file here, and I have one last thing to show you before uh, Volker uh, jumps in with some tips of his own. Let's, uh, I'm going to restore that view again, just like we did at the beginning here. That's dash V and R and V1, and there's our view. Okay, so from here, um, we've got, let's say we want to uh, copy a couple of these objects here um, over into another area. And uh, we can actually do that by selecting them. And I mean, you could use the copy command and move them. Um, but you have a couple of other options here. If you right click and press down, and as long as you're holding down that right mouse button, you can drag this anywhere you want. And let's say we want to place it somewhere over here. Um, once you release the right mouse button, it'll bring up this uh, right-click menu here, and um, you have these four options. Move here, copy here, paste as block, or cancel. And I want to paste this as a block. 
right now. And what this does, if I click on it and go over to properties, it'll show me that it created a new block inside the file. And it's just given us this random name, uh, a dollar sign C five seven. I mean, you would never remember this uh, as you know this particular workstation uh, block. And let's say you do this a dozen times, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them. So what we're going to do is rename the block, and that's at the command line. Uh, rename, enter, and it brings up this dialog box to rename a block. Oh, well, you can rename all sorts of things, but today we're going to rename the block here. Um, so it gives you the list of blocks that are existing in the file right now. And we're going to select this one up here because we know this is the block that we just created. And it tells you what the old name is in this top field here. And then if you click on the bottom field here, you can um, type in a new name. And we're just going to call it, oh, sorry, I have my caps lock on, uh, workstation. And click OK. And now we've renamed this block to workstation, and it's uh, much easier from a, an organizational perspective to understand what's in your drawing and be able to access it quickly the next time you need that block. All right, the last thing that I have, I, wait, I, do I? No, I, yeah, I do have one more thing. Um, we've got this, uh, let's open up the Layer Properties Manager. Now, I've already got mine docked over to the side, but you can just go up to the ribbon on the Home ribbon, under the Layers tab. There's this Layer Properties uh, button here. Open the Layer Properties Manager. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of layers in here. And let's say we want to copy some of this information out into another file, uh, an Excel file. What you can do is click on one of the, uh, the um, layers here, layer names, and then um, I'm just using shift click to select a bunch of them and I'm going to use control C on my keyboard and this will copy all of the data out from um, uh, from these layers so now I'm going to launch Excel bear with me for a second sorry uh, all right so we've got Excel here and it's as simple as control V on the keyboard, and you can paste all this information into Excel to get your, um, you know, you've got your layer names, uh, line types, colors, all of your, uh, all of your layer information right there. So that's actually a really cool uh, bit of information there for anybody documenting CAD standards. Uh, if you ever uh, set up a template file, and you want to make sure that that is documented, what you used. Obviously, you have the template file, but if you need to put it into a CAD manager's handbook, for example, uh, you could easily just copy Control A for everything in the layer dialog and then paste it into Excel and you're ready to go. So, very cool feature, uh, Victoria. That's all I've got, Volker. Oh, well then I'm going to show some stuff. How's that? Okay. All right. You can, you can All right. have my screen back. All right. Thank hey, you. Thanks for th having me, Volker. Yeah, thank you for uh, demonstrating all that. So uh, what uh, I've got a few more things to finish up here. Uh, and one of those is, you know, we're all about productivity when working with AutoCAD. And I think, um, and every day we learn something new as well. You know, these little uh, shortcuts we show you here, uh, these are things we learn as we move along or somebody shows us. But one way we can continue learning what's available to us in AutoCAD um, is by watching our command prompt. I like to work without the dynamic input on. Uh, Victoria likes to have it off, on, and I like it off. So I, um, I do like to prefer the command line, and many of us uh, who have been around a while prefer that as well. What I recommend, though, is that if you're watching the command line, and you should, okay, there's all kinds of information AutoCAD gives you, and it always tells you what it's expecting, okay? So one of the things I like to do, one, I like to dock it. Or, if not, put it on a different monitor. But whatever you do, 
go ahead and resize it to where you have a few extra lines of text. Uh, I would recommend three as a minimum, but I prefer six. And with the resolution on monitors nowadays, it doesn't use up that much real estate. And it's always been more of a benefit than uh, hey, Volker? a detraction. Think yes. You're uh, displaying the Word document as opposed to AutoCAD. Oh, that's no good. It shows people I'm just reading off of a script. <laughs> okay. Sorry, people. Hey, this is my Voker awkward moment, right? Um, all right. And, uh, Renee, I'm letting you know it's because Winter is sitting on my lap, okay? And he says hello. All right. <laughs> That's better. All right. So let me start over with that awkward moment there, huh? Okay. So, yeah, so typically we see the command line like this. Um, just grab it by the sidebar here, and then um, by placing your cursor here, you get these little grab handles, and you can resize it, okay? And like I said, I pre uh, recommend three, but uh, personally I keep it about six so I can see what's going on. When you have commands such as, uh, let's go with the polyline, uh, so P edit, enter, okay? So we have all these options here. Um, but it's not gonna show me a history what I've done either, okay? So like I said, I uh, prefer to have that turned off, uh, whoops, turned off. And then when I'm working with a command such as P edit or so, I, I kinda like to see what's going on here. It's also a good way to keep track of what you know, options are available, close, join, with edit, vertex, so forth. And for example, if I went to, into edit vertex, it would actually list even more commands. And you're not gonna see these in the dynamic input, but you will see these options available to you on the command prompt. So that's, that's one of them right there. That, that's always a good one to know about. The other one is um, oftentimes you'll be working in, um, a drawing such as this, and maybe you have a layout. And I haven't set up this. Uh, I actually added this tip uh, impromptu at the very last minute today, and I'm not really worried about it. But we all know, working with paper space, that as soon as we zoom in and out, okay, we lose our scale factor. It's arbitrary to begin with. If we assign it one, let's go with, um, what, an eighth inch equals a foot. All right. Good enough. So that's the scale factor. Typically, what I would do is select the viewport, and then I would lock it so that as I'm zooming in or out by making the viewport window active, you know, I don't lose that scale factor. Uh, but what happens if I want to uh, check something out in the other part of the drawing? I could switch over to model space, um, or I could unlock the viewport and zoom around that way. Again, I lose the scale factor. So we have a button down here, and it is called Maximize Viewport. You could go here. I personally prefer to just double click on the viewport itself. Notice we now have this highlighted border. Now, once this viewport is maximized, you know, I can check out anything in the drawing. I can do some work, uh, add some text, or hey, in this case, I needed to copy this text to uh, to place in the uh, area where I was at. Whatever I want to do. The bottom line is that once I'm done doing whatever I need to do in model space, I just double click on that border, and it takes me back to how the viewport looked, regardless of where I was. So maximize and minimize viewport or VP max and VP min are the um, uh, commands to do that. Oftentimes, if you're a command line user, you may be typing in commands like, um, oh, CO for copy, okay? And when I'm working, I tend to type pretty quickly. And sometimes I'll hit enter and I'll, it'll be a completely different command. Um, uh, obviously, whenever I want to show it, it's not going to happen. But the bottom line is, is that 
at times were too fast for the keyboard with um, this IntelliSense that we have built into AutoCAD to display commands. So typing in C shows all commands right now, or most of them, uh, if I were to continue copying it, typing C, it would show me copy. But that's what it's doing. So if you're having problems with that where the input is not what you're expecting as you type, it's because not all the input was given. Uh, it just accepted the enter. So what we can do is we can um, modify this input settings and change the delay time. By default, it's set at 300. I typically like to have mine at 500 milliseconds. This allows me to type in or make sure that all my input is typed in by the time I hit enter and AutoCAD sees all that and gives me the right command. I hope that makes sense. If you are a keyboard user for AutoCAD commands, I'm sure you've discovered what I'm talking about. This is how you change it. Okay, so finally, having said that, and speaking of um, uh, how things look here, I've got three more things to show you. And one of those is tailor AutoCAD the way you want uh, it to be and be able to use it efficiently. One way to do that is maybe if, if your eyesight is a little bad or, or maybe, uh, uh, maybe it isn't bad, you just want bigger fonts. Okay, change that. Maybe you want the background color here to be different. We can do all this in the Options dialog under the Display tab, Colors and Fonts. There are only a limited amount of fonts you can change this to, but um, uh, you can certainly choose any one of those. The big thing here is that you can make them larger if you need to, bold them if you'd like to. Uh, so apply and notice the update, so that may be easier for people. And you can also change colors for anything in AutoCAD, and it's been segregated pretty well. Uh, we can change colors of the background for model space, for any layouts, uh, how they are in the block editor, in a plot preview, or in my case, I like to actually have like a yellow colored text with a blue background. So you can easily do that by um, command line history background, selecting that, you can change the color of the text here. So actually, let's go ahead and do it while I'm here. And we'll go ahead and make that blue. And apply. And so, you know, if you think need things to stand out, um, this is where you take care of that. It's been, uh, scientifically, it's been proven that either a white or black background for your uh, editor is probably the best to be looking at all day. You know, um, uh, a uh, fluorescent pink probably wouldn't do you very well. And remember that white and black are inverted, so uh, they work best on either of those backgrounds as far as uh, line work goes. One thing I'd like to show you here is that the new tab, a lot of people don't right-click very often. Anywhere you right-click in AutoCAD, you'll have different options, and some very cool ones are here. We can easily create a new one. Of course, we could do that by clicking on the plus sign. But uh, we can open a drawing from here, save this particular drawing, save it as a new drawing, or we can save all drawings. And if you do this, it's going to, um, if you have 10 drawings open, it will save all 10 of those. If they uh, have not been named, it will prompt you to name them. We also have the same options for close and close all. Close all except this one tab. Close all drawings. If the drawings uh, have not been named, it will prompt you for a name, but otherwise it'll just, um, uh, actually if they, in this case, it will also prompt you uh, to save the drawings if they have not been saved. You know, obviously sometimes we, we don't want that. Oftentimes you'll need the full path of a drawing, maybe for documentation purposes. Uh, this allows us to do that. This is a quick way also to get to that file on the hard drive or on the network if you just want to, um, I don't know, review the same project, uh, the files that are in that same project folder. 
Now that's a good example right there. You know, you need to get to that folder quick. This is how we do it. Close all and save all are actually command line inputs as well. You could just type those in at the command line, get the same functionality. Or better yet, if you just want to get out of here quickly, double click on the application browser. If drawings need to be saved, go ahead and save them, but it allowed me to quickly exit AutoCAD. And I think that's about it. Um, let me uh, quickly just uh, uh, talk about my uh, data set real quick uh, uh, the, uh, that I've made available for you and uh, then show you what's coming up and we will take questions and we will hang around a little later um, after, the, uh, after these few slides to answer questions. So some additional resources for tips and tricks. Uh, obviously, our first webinar on the 29th. Like I said, the data set for that is in the data set we'll be leaving for you on the download side. Check out Lynn Allen's blog, a great place. She's always got great tips and tricks. I've even included her uh, uh, tips and tricks booklet for the 2015 version of AutoCAD. Heidi Hewitt is also an awesome resource, a uh, very smart lady. And then Autodesk University Online has several courses made available, tips and tricks, how to use certain features. Always check out the community. People like Namin are available to answer your question. Other end users are available. Autodesk support personnel are also available and check those out. Check out the uh, commands and system variables section of the help file. Uh, there are so many system variables that affect how commands work. There are so many new commands we may not know about. They're all listed there. Also check out Augie, the AutoCAD User Group International. It's a great, um, great resource, great club to be a part of. Coming up, this is our last session with AutoCAD 2015. We will begin with AutoCAD LT 2016 next week, showing you the new features, followed by um, AutoCAD 2016, a two-parter. You can think of this as three parts, uh, but LT, everything that's specific to LT, and then a little bit of both for the uh, following two sessions, followed by modified commands, and then followed by the look of line types. Um, how to work with them, how to load them, how to even create your own. A glossy overview of the creating your own, though, okay? It'll get you started. Check out our other webinars. And let's run one poll and answer questions. Okay, let's uh, start off here with a quick poll. And uh, just like we usually do, just want to know if you've learned something new today. And I can say I did. It's a couple of those things I've never seen before. And... Uh, there are a couple of uh, holdouts here, not getting to 100%, but uh, certainly the vast majority of people uh, are saying that they've learned something new, so that's great. And uh, I will go ahead and close that with about 75% um, answering, and about 98% say they learned something new. Well, that's awesome. Um, sorry if we didn't teach any everybody something new. Um, I'm glad most of the people did get something out of this and uh, that it was of benefit. So, um, yeah, awesome. Uh, questions? Yeah, so f first of all, uh, there were lots of comments about, you know, great tip, you know, people loving different things, so, that, so that's great. We, we definitely made some people happy. Um, there were lots of comments about different ways to do different things and you know that's what one of the wonderful things about AutoCAD that there are lots of different ways of accomplishing the same tasks and you may have your favorite um, we we're just showing you know some of the things that we have done in the past I guess um, yeah and actually we probably could have shown three or four different ways to do them as well <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we yeah uh, and we are glad for that input really because it's true Numerous ways to do things. So there were a few questions about the uh, the layer dialog and copying to Excel. So the, the first thing was, uh, is there a way to also include the headers when you do the copy? So it says description, 
color, line type, etc. I believe and, uh, I'm going to switch over to my AutoCAD and let's just try this out. I believe if you do Control A, that it it grabs those. So um, let's see if I'm lying or actually know what I'm talking about. Okay, or or making things up as I go. How's that? I do tend to make things up a, go, a lot on the go, but I try not to lie about it either. So let's go into the layer command, and in this case here, I'm just going to go do a control A. I don't think it's going to grab them. And uh, whoops, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to control A and head and uh, launch Excel. Control V. Yeah, well, there's your headers right there. Oh, great. Yeah, it just didn't reflect it in the dialog. See how it's just hi highlighting the layer names? Yeah. Or the layers themselves, not not the headers. So, good question. Yep, yeah, there were also a couple of questions, uh, basically the same question, asking if you could kind of do the reverse. Can you have a list of layer names in Excel and kind of import them into AutoCAD? Uh, no, the way you'd want to do that is to write a script. Yeah, yeah which we haven't touched on in our series yet. But uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's how we would want to do it. Or um, if you have them in another drawing already, just, you know, use Design Center, drag and drop. Yeah. Uh, Norman actually had a, a good... Uh, um, answer to uh, the line type thing. If you type a uh, line type gen, uh, it should update those line types when you change the system variable for having the line types continuous versus stopping on the polylines. You see what I mean about these expert elites? They'll they'll just twenty minutes ago. <laughs> they'll just straighten you out so quick, won't they? So thank you, Naman. That is a good one to know about. Yeah. Um so the the script is posted with the uh, data sets and stuff, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, so what they saw on the screen was no big secret, okay? Um, it will be there so you can walk through these, and there's also the script for the previous data set so you can walk through those tips and tricks, as well as the drawing files. Yeah. Um, so uh, regen versus regen all versus regen auto, what's the difference? Uh, regen auto is going to slow you down. <laughs> I would leave that off. Um, it um, uh, so regen regenerates the drawing database for model space. Okay, when you're in paper space, though, you're in two different environments. You have the paper space or layout, right? This is one environment, and then within paper space, you have a model viewport. If we were to just do a regen to update here in paper space, that's all it's going to update. Regen all would update the paper space environment as well as the model view itself or X amount of model views that you may have. Regen auto um, allows AutoCAD to decide when to regenerate and um, I believe you're even prompted, need to regen, is it okay? Uh, this is a legacy function uh, that was very useful when you were running on a 386 uh, uh, with, my, you know, uh, four gigabyte or megabytes, gigabytes, megabytes of RAM at the most. Uh, so I would I would leave that off, uh, unless anybody has a better explanation, Dave or Naman or Victoria. I think I think that's I think that's good. Um, Somebody wants would like uh, Linda would like to you to repeat how to change the color of the command line. Oh yeah, I can do that easily. Um, I right mouse click over the command line, select options. I went into colors, and because uh, well, really doesn't matter here. I'm in 2D model space. I've selected that background. Whoops, I didn't want that. Sorry, didn't mean to confuse you. Command line is what I want because that's what you want. <laughs> so here's the command history background. I've changed it to blue. And then command history text, yellow. Active prompt background, active prompt text, um, temporary prompt. These allow you to change. So like if I were to type in um, 
the command right now, it would appear on this white uh, section in AutoCAD 2015, and and you can change that background and its text as well. Uh, you can basically um, play with the rest of these. I personally prefer just to do the history here. Uh, that works well for me, but you can certainly change any of the text and background options available. There's like four of them, I think, now. It used to just be two, and that was for the background and the text. Okay. And uh, somebody would like you to explain the clip command again. Well, the clip command is built into many different um, uh, commands. Uh, Xref has xclip, image, you can clip an image. Uh, and it, it's basically a way to just show one part of an object. I could clip this viewport, in fact, but let's, uh, as long as you have a closed border like this, and I'm just using the standalone clip command, but notice we have clip, copy clip, X clip, cut clip, image clip, all kinds, all right? I just want to use the standalone clip command. Is, um, it then so it tells me, okay, what do you want to clip? Um, I'm going to go, and I, I'm ad-libbing here. I shouldn't have done that. Let's do a, uh, gosh darn it. Let's do the viewport. Let's go back into model space. Yeah, never ad-lib, people, never ad-lib. I've got this, um, okay. Here's a block, a chair. I'm going to clip it. I just want to show the back part of that block. That's a good one. I'm going to put a rectangle border around it. Or I could draw one within the clip command. Right? But I'm going to go clip. And I'm going to select the chair. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell, look, I want to select this new, uh, a new boundary. I wanted to use the polyline that I've already created, which is that rectangle. And having clipped it, it only shows that. The object still appears. It's still here. And if you wanted to, you could even use the, the clip frame. X clip frame. I think that one should do it. Been a while. Been a while. And is it... There's several settings for that one. Let's go F1. There's like three settings, I think. So you can have two. It's displayed but not plotted, too. That's the one I want. So always go into um, help if you aren't quite sure, like I just did. I'm going to change this to a value of 1 because right now I don't want it to change. Does this one work on this? Dave, do you recall? Am I doing... Never ad lib, people. Never ad lib. Yeah, not sure. Yeah, I know it works. Uh, it'll hide that frame on XREFs uh, using the frame for an XREF. Uh, right now, I'm just not thinking clearly on that one. It'll come to me in about 10 minutes after we're done with all this. I apologize. But there are ways to hide the frame is the bottom line. Uh, I just can't remember if there's a specific clip function to hide this frame. Um, but all it does, it masks out anything that is not a part of a block, part of a viewport, um, XREF image. So it has to be one of those objects. Okay. And uh, going back to uh, when Victoria was showing the custom hatch and um, you know the polyline boundary, so the question is, like, what happens if you change the shape of the polyline after the hatch was created? Does the hatch get updated or uh, is it left? Where it was. Um, the, the hatch does get updated it, it, um, if you if you move it. Yeah, it, very good. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Victoria. That's uh, absolutely and, right. So I, I tested it over here. It um it does uh, it does create a second frame around it or a, a second copy of the polyline for the um, for the clip frame. Well, but if you grab the the grips and drag them um, or otherwise edit it, it will. Um, as long as, as long as the array that you clipped is still within the boundary, um, it will update. 
Yeah, and and actually what's happening there is when you use the clip command, you can use an existing polyline like that. And so what it's done, it's created a frame on top of that polyline, Victoria. And if you had not used an existing polyline, then only the clip frame would have been there. So you would have drawn using the built-in uh, frame tool, and then you would not see a dual line. If it, does that make sense? Basically, the clip command is using the close, it, close polyline as a reference and saying, okay, I'm just on top of this. So you can keep it there, um, but um, it will be a standalone object as well as along with the clip frame. So you uh, could technically delete that original polyline and the clipped frame would still, uh, the clip right. frame would still stay. Right. Yeah, and uh, one more time, um, I guess uh, you're going too fast for people. The uh, when you're copying everything, including the headers from uh, from the layer dialog into the Excel, um, just wanted to see that one more time. I guess no problem. And yes, you know when you do stuff, uh, sometimes you think everybody's keeping up with you, but uh, you know it's just a force of habit. So anyway, I am just gonna select any layer, doesn't matter. Then I'll do a control A. And that of course copies it to the windows, uh, uh, it selects everything within the layer property dialog right now, including the header as we discovered earlier, even though that's not shown. Then I'm gonna do a control C, copying everything to the clipboard. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to um, my Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, you know, I'll actually create a new one here. I'm making a cell active, so in this case, I mean, I could make it down here. Everything would start beginning there, but I'm just going to go right here, Control V, and voila! And so now I could, you know format these layers, uh, headers, I could format the cells just like anything else in Excel. That's about it. That's all there is to it. It's pretty, um, pretty uh, functional and there are step-by-step -step instructions for that in the um, data set that you can download. Uh, Volker, on the um, on the clip frame. Yeah. Uh, I I just looked it up in the help file. It looks like if you use the frame uh, system variable, if you set that, I want to say to, is it one? You should be able to turn it on and off. It's controlled by the frame variable. Oh uh, yeah, right. That's exactly it. I was using the one for the reference manager. So. Yeah, that was what um, I'm looking for. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so, C, enter, P, enter. Yeah, so here we go. Frame. I kind of thought I was using the wrong command. Frame, there it is. And that's actually set to a default of three to begin with. So, here we go. So one displays and plots the frame. Displays but does not plot the frame. And then this one here allows settings to vary for all these different frames right here. So um, let's put it to zero. Enter. And of course it's regenerated, but remember I drew a polyline here. Right? So I'm going to erase that polyline and the frame is still there. And we can test that. Obviously it is because we're only seeing part of the block, but if I set it back to, oops, three. Oh yeah, I can't do that in this, uh, two. All right, there we go, there it is, it's back. With a vengeance. Okay, Volker, I think that uh, we probably should at least end the, the official part of the um, webinar here. We're at 10 past the hour, and we can maybe stay online and answer some additional questions, but wanna wrap, wrap up the session? 
I think that's a great idea. I, I wasn't even paying attention to time. Uh, so um, I'm going to at least